You're about to listen to another inspiring word from House on the Rock Church, the London Lighthouse. All right, let's get into God's word. Don't run away. God has a word to bless you today. We're reading from the book of Acts and chapter 12, verse 1 to 6. Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 6. It says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after his Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Now, I, I could go on and tell you all the other parts of this, um, this story, but you, you see the, the, the foundation here. There was persecution coming against the church. The church was being harassed. And James, the brother of John, John had been taken and had been killed. He had been killed. He had been murdered by Herod. And when Herod saw that this pleased the, the religious Jews, he went ahead to go and apprehend he arrested peter and he put peter in prison also with the intent of killing him the only reason he did not kill him kill him immediately was because he was waiting for the the season of passover to pass over he was waiting for easter to be over before he would bring peter out and publicly execute him so peter was locked down and locked up the title of my message is Locked Down, but not locked up. Mighty Father, I ask that you take complete control, that in these next few moments you speak through me, you think through my mind, you speak through my tongue. Let revelation flow freely in this house, unhindered by any demonic force or power. Speak to the people in their homes. Go through this electronic media, through the world wide web, and bless somebody. Turn somebody's life around. Let your anointing be tangibly felt where your people are right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right. We are definitely living in unprecedented times. That can't be gainsaid. It's so obvious. These are times that we are finding it so hard to even understand and totally comprehend. Everything around us is changing so fast. Just when you think you're getting some form of stability, something happens again and you have to change. Just last week, Sunday, we were able to do a mini service with only essential team people from the church building but within but a few days we can't do that again we have to now be able to get words God's word across to you from home the times are changing so fast around us and to protect us and we are working as a nation and as a people the government has deemed it fit for us to be on lockdown now they don't like using the word lockdown but in effect what we, we, we are facing right now what we are experiencing right now is a lockdown down and we are just getting through the first week of the lockdown the measured lockdown we are just getting through the first week of it uh, and it's very important for us to abide by the instructions of the government to follow those guidelines so we've got to stay at home tell tell your your, your neighbor who is sitting beside you at home right now or with you in the kitchen or wherever you are tell that person stay at home observe the directions of our government we are submitted to authority so we obey the authorities over us it's important that we do so to be able to limit the spread of this virus we've got to limit it we've got to contain it we are going to be victorious 
over it. Life as we know it has changed overnight. We are living in the end times described in the Bible. It's almost as if words from the Bible are just jumping out from the very uh, pages of the Bible and we are seeing it in real life every day. Prophecies in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke are being fulfilled before our eyes. Uh, last week Sunday I talked talk, talk to you about the shaking that is taking place and it is definitely taking place. In Haggai chapter 2 and um, verse 6 and 7 the Lord said I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory saith the Lord. God said he's going to shake the nations, he's going to shake the earth, the sea, the dry land and then he says he's going to shake all nations. Even right now there is no nation that is not being impacted by this scourge. Every single nation of the earth is experiencing it. What a phenomenal. All nations are being shaken. The New Testament in Hebrews chapter 12 says that in verse 27, and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made and those things which cannot be shaken may remain. In other words, everything that can be shaken is being shaken and only that which is, is, is stable is rooted in God will remain. The many things that men depended on, that they were confident about, confident about this, confident about that, the systems and the structures that we thought were going to last forever and, and tied us through various seasons, all of them are being shaken today. All things that can be shaken are being shaken so that only that which cannot be shaken will remain. If you agree with me, throw a thumbs up right now on Facebook Live. Throw up a heart. Engage. Let me know that you are there. Let me know that you agree with the thing that I'm saying. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 2, it says that darkness will cover the land and gross darkness will cover the the people. That's what we are seeing right now. We are seeing darkness. We are seeing all of these things around us. But guess what? In the darkness, that is the time to shine. No wonder Isaiah 61 said, arise and shine for your light has come. It is actually in the same time of darkness that we are meant to arise and shine. Stars shine at night. Oh yes, this is the time for us to shine. Don't let the darkness in in intimidate you. This is the time for you to be thinking about, oh Lord, even though I'm locked up at home, how can I still be a light? How can I still help? How can I still assist? How can I still point people to Christ Jesus? Another characteristic of the last days that we are living in is persecution. There will be persecution. Get ready to be persecuted. Oh my goodness, I know I wasn't going to get anybody excited about that. Just tell your neighbor in your living room, wherever you are, say, ouch, ouch, ouch. Get ready for persecution. There will be persecution. What type of persecution am I talking about? We're going to get persecuted for the truth of God's word that we believe. Uh, you see, in this season, they're going to look at you and they're going to wonder what is it about you. They're going to ask you for the reason for your hope. They're going to say, why are you still smiling when everybody else is crying? Why are you still looking up, hopefully, to a bright future when we can't seem to see any bright future? They're going to ask you for the reason for your hope and you've got to be ready to give them an answer to tell them why you believe what you believe. But guess what? After some time, there will be those that will consider you to be weird. That How can you still be hopeful when everything is not working the way that it's supposed to work? How can you and then after they think you weird they're going to start to attack you for your faith so there's going to be perse persecution and this we saw in the book of Acts even Jesus told his disciples that if the world persecuted me they're going to do the same to you in the book of Acts we see the saints being persecuted and this is where our story picks up our story picks up in a time when the body of Christ was being persecuted they were being chased they were being hounded and in our text it says that it went as far as for the king Herod to pick up James and to kill James he took James the brother of John and he 
killed him. He murdered him. Oh my goodness. I know that should challenge our theology a little bit. Uh, or maybe a whole lot. We like to think that if you will get good. And if you will get bad but you, you, it doesn't always work like that we don't like it when good things happen to bad people and we hate it even more when bad things happen to good people but the reality is in real life bad things happen to good people people. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, if you can identify with what I just said, if you know that this is the reality of the world that we live in, give me a thumbs up. Throw up a heart right now. That uh, right now. Type something inside the feed uh, that the truth is we live in a world where we don't have explanations for everything. Bad things do happen to good people uh, and good things happen to bad people at least by our judgment. Uh, how, who are we to even judge who is is good and who is bad but by our judgment we get annoyed when we see bad things happening to good people can you imagine think about it james the brother of john he was an apostle he was doing the work of the kingdom he was healing the sick he was preaching the gospel the good news that jesus saves he was getting people delivered and yet god allowed james to be taken and to be killed taken and killed they taken and murdered can you imagine that why did god allow james to be killed oh why did god allow james to be killed i i, I i'm not going to tell you that i have the answer or that i fully understand the truth is i don't know i don't know why god allowed james to be killed this goes against our popular theology today our popular theology today makes it seem that nothing bad would ever happen to a saint but we see in the scriptures that this is not the case that we've got to be able to endure hardness like a good soldier of christ the bible is not a fictional storybook the book of acts is particularly a historical account of what actually happened so these people actually were killed god in his sovereignty allowed james to be killed and he was not the only apostle to be killed the truth be told of the 12 primary apostles only john the beloved did not was not killed every single one of them was martyred in fact god allowed the stoning of stephen remember stephen stephen that prelate apostle that man of great wisdom and full of the holy spirit who knew how to talk down naysayers yet god allowed for the people to grab him and to stone him to death and the stoning and the killing of stephen was what caused the church to break out of jerusalem and start to scatter abroad and fulfill the original mandate for which the church was birthed in the first place so god used stephen's death as a catalyst to get the gospel to go even further because we were meant to be witnesses not just in jerusalem but in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Why did God allow James to be killed? I don't know why God allowed James to be killed, but maybe it was to wake up the church to the place of prayer. Maybe it was to cause the church to ar re arise and pray like they never had prayed before. I don't know, but this I know, he allowed it. And that he allowed it does not mean that he did it let me make that clarification that god allows something to happen doesn't mean that god is the causer of the thing doesn't mean that god is the initiator of it that god has allowed this pandemic to take over upon the face of the earth does not mean that god is the one that released the pandemic god did not release the pandemic how do i know because my god is an altogether good god and his thoughts towards us are not thoughts of ill or evil but of, of good and of peace because the word of 
of God lets me know that the, our, our God is the father of light in whom there is no variableness nor the shadow of turning. So anything bad didn't come from God but he allowed it in his sovereignty because he has to allow the wills and the choices of men to operate upon this terrestrial plane. Alright? So he allowed it but he did not do it. He permitted it but he did not cause it. Oh, But when you start to consider that James was killed it should make you start to ponder some things. Uh, uh, if James could be killed Oh my, what about me? Does that mean that, that I too can be killed? If James could be killed, uh, does that mean because it happened to him, does it mean it, it can happen to me? Don't open that door. Uh, tell that person that is sitting next to you, don't open that door. Uh, however, because James was killed, did it also mean that Peter also had to be killed? Because something bad happened to someone else. You now start to consider that maybe it can happen to you too. Don't open that door. It happened to him. That it happened to him doesn't mean that it has to happen to you. Tell that person seated to you beside you right now. Don't open that door. Uh, there is more than you, th th that you don't know than what you do know. You don't know why whatever happened to another person happened to that other person. You can't be an accurate ju judge. Don't open that door. Don't open the door to fear because somebody else lost it. Because somebody else went crazy. Now you are entertaining the notion that you too are about to lose it and are about to go crazy. Don't open that door. Tell somebody around you in your kitchen, in your living room, in your bedroom. Tell your wife, your husband, your partner, your spouse, whoever it is that's around you. Tell them right now, don't open that door. Don't open the door to fear. If you agree with what I'm saying, give me a thumbs up, throw up some heart. That someone else died from it doesn't mean you have to die from it. That someone else lost it doesn't mean you have to lose it. That someone else didn't get the job doesn't mean you won't get the job. That someone else never got married doesn't mean that you won't get married. Can I prophesy to somebody that even in your kin years you are going to meet the love of your life and you are going to be a living testimony unto multitudes in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't open that door. Those that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Don't let someone else's demise become your demise. So James was killed and Peter was seized to be killed also. No doubt Herod's full intention was to murder Peter also. Woo! Peter was taken, he was apprehended, put in prison, and locked up between four quaternions qu qu of soldiers to keep him. He was not, this was not house arrest. He was locked down and locked up. The intention was to bring him out for execution after Easter. Oh my, my, my. Uh, Easter is around the corner for us as a church and as a world right now. Satan plans for, for somebody to be executed after Easter, but he will not have his way. Say amen. Say amen. Satan will not have his way with you. Type amen right now. He will not have his way with you. He locked you down and locked you up with even more sinister intent, but that devil uh, will not have his way. What he meant for evil is about to turn for your good. It's going to bring glory to God. I know it's tough to comprehend that even what we're going through right now is still going to bring glory to God. We're coming out better and not bitter, stronger and not weaker. We're in lockdown right now and for some of us it feels like we've been locked up. Oh, we can't go to, to church. We can't go visit our friends. We can't go to our favorite restaurant. We can't go to the movies. It's just been one week in lockdown and you've been homeschooling your, your kids and they graduated on Thursday because you didn't know what else to do anymore. Uh, they're driving you crazy. We're in lockdown. You may be 
in lockdown, but you are not locked up. You may be in lockdown, but you are not locked up. You are not locked up in your spirit. You are not locked up in your soul. You are not locked up in your body. Unlike Peter, Peter was locked up. His, your hands and your feet are not in chains. And more importantly, your spirit and your soul are still feel, feel free to create and innovate. Even in this season of lockdown, this is the time for you to give birth to fresh breath children uh, new ideas new innovations uh, be more creative if you believe me what I'm saying give me a thumbs up a heart uh, type amen say yes somebody you may be locked down uh, but you are not locked up up all right i need to bring this thing closer to the close in verse 6 of our text it lets us know that peter had been taken into prison and he would have been brought out to be executed the night before he would be brought out to be executed he was sleeping the scripture says he was sleeping between two short soldiers sleeping sleeping your execution day has come your execution day is tomorrow and what are you doing you are sleeping he was sleeping in between two soldiers sleeping in prison sleeping on the eve of his execution sleeping while in trouble <laughs> how can you sleep while you are in such trouble with death looming well only a man or a woman of faith can sleep when all hell is broken breaking loose when everything is going upside down yet Peter was sleeping, hands changed, legs bound, in between two soldiers, yet he was sleeping. It reminds me, he must have learnt this from his master Jesus, who was sleeping in the hinder part of a boat when a storm was raging and water was entering the boat, threatening to destroy their lives, yet he was sleeping 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 true believers know how to sleep in trouble i'm not talking about the sleep of not praying i'm talking about the sleep of faith after you've done all you need to do in faith it's time to sleep it's time to trust the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding sleep in the lockdown because you will soon be released ah that's a word for somebody sleep in the lockdown because because you will soon be released as you sleep in your dreams is going to give you ideas innovations the knowledge of witty inventions he's going to show you what to do to be able to move forward when the prison doors are opened in verse 7 it lets us know that the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on his side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands ah a light shone in the prison and the angel woke peter up and said arise and as peter arose the chains that were holding his hands dropped off him as peter arose the chains that were holding his hands dropped off him as you arise the chains that are holding you are going to drop off you if you believe it type amen shout amen in your living room you are going to arise and the chains are going to fall off you in fact when i look at that verse 7 a little bit closer oh it sounds like isaiah chapter 60 arise and shine the angel said arise and light shone in the prison and then as he rose the chains fell off him i prophesy once again as you arise in this season your chains are falling off you in the name of Jesus then the angel led Peter, Peter out of prison past the first world past the second world and then they came to the iron gate the big iron gate that separates the prison from the city and it says that that big iron gate opened of its own accord some doors are going to open 
for you in this season of its own accord. You're going to get phone calls, a text message, an email saying we need you. Oh, did you hear me what I'm saying? It won't even be a function of, oh, you are the one knocking on the door. You are the one using one key or another. No, you are going to find out that some doors are going to open for you of their own accord. You won't need to push. You won't need to beg. You won't need to negotiate. They will open of their own accord. But guess what? While all of this was happening, Peter still thought that he was dreaming. He thought he was dreaming. It was only after the angel left him outside the prison that he realized that he was not dreaming. Can I prophesy to somebody out there today from Psalms 126 verse 1 and 2. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they unto the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Oh, an audacious prophecy indeed. But I tell you that God is going to turn around our captivity. He's going to turn around our lockdown. He's going to turn around what seems to be caging and hindering us. And we are going to come back with our mouths full of laughter, our tongue with singing. And even the heathen will have to say, the Lord has done great things for them. God is going to so turn around your story that it would be as if you are dreaming. You are going to have to pinch yourself to convince yourself that you are not dreaming. Your dreams are about to come true. Your dreams are about to come true. Ah, but Peter had been locked down and locked up in the inner dungeon of the prison, shackled between two soldiers. Can you imagine that? The angel came. I wonder what type of sleep those two soldiers beside him were sleeping. They must have been under some form of anesthetic agent. Ah, ketamine or something. Knocked them totally out. I don't know how he got through all of those wards of soldiers and finally the great iron gate because Peter was surrounded there seemed to be no way out he was surrounded this reminds me of another story in 2nd Kings chapter 6 from verse 13 to 18 Elisha had been vexing the Syrian king and the Syrian king was so upset that he found out where Elisha was and then he sent his horses his chariots and a great host to encompass pass the city where Elisha was. Elisha was surrounded. No way out, no way in. Elisha was on lockdown. But guess what? Elisha was not locked up. It would seem that he was out of options. Nowhere to go. Nothing to do. No way out. No way for assistance to even come in. But guess what? When you looked at Elijah's demeanor, he was not even perturbed. He was cool, calm, and collected. Cool as a cucumber, as if nothing at all was wrong. His servant looked upon him, panicking. He said, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Elisha replied, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than those that be with them, than those that are against us. The servant looked around incredulously, said, Elisha, I can't see what you can see. This looks like we are down. It looks like we are out. I don't understand you are talking about. Then Elisha prayed for the eyes of the servant to be opened. And when the eyes of the servant was opened, he saw that around those that were around Elisha and his servant was yet a great host, a great host of angels with their own horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Somebody shout amen. Somebody throw a thumbs up. Send some hearts up there. If you haven't invited your friend yet 
your neighbor yet to join our online service it's not too late right now do it because this is a word to encourage somebody this is a word to help somebody this is a word to deliver somebody I came to prophesy to somebody today that there are more for you than those against you you've been listening to the bad press too long the negative press all the time and it's been amplified in your mind there are more people for you than those that are against you there are more people on your side than those that are against you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world there is more going for you than the COVID-19 coming against you may your eyes be open to see beyond the veil God's got you his angels are standing guard over you yes you are surrounded but not the way you thought Woo! I'm trying to contain myself. The joy of the Holy Ghost is jumping on the inside of me. You are surrounded, but not the way you thought. It may look like you are surrounded, but you are surrounded not by the enemy. You are surrounded by Almighty God. Because in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, For your life is hid in Christ, in God. So you are surrounded by God. You are not surrounded by the negative you're not surrounded by the enemy you're not surrounded by the disease you are surrounded by God you might be isolated but you are not alone you might be isolated but you are not alone he is your shield and your buckler your glory and the lifter up of your head it may look like you are surrounded but you are not surrounded by what you think you are surrounded with you are surrounded surrounded by God when you realize that you are actually surrounded by God therefore you are hidden from the wiles of the enemy then you understand that Psalms 91 is actually your battle cry it's the battle cry of the person that knows that he's surrounded by God Psalm 91 says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome, noisome pestilence. He will cover thee with his feathers under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flieth by day nor of the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor of the destruction that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come near thee only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou has made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling come on say amen type it in there throw in an, a thumbs up and a heart for he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample on the feet because he, ha he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him he will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation I decree and declare Psalm 91 over you today and throughout this crisis you shall live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord the works of our great God in the land of the living Psalms 118 and verse 17 ah, as I round up back to our text Peter was delivered from prison by the angel and he went to where the saints were praying 
and he knocked on the door he knocked on the door and a damsel named Rhoda came to the door and hearing his voice rejoiced and instead of opening the door ran back into into the house to tell the saints that Peter was at the door but when she told the saints that Peter was at the door the saints said she must be out of her mind she's gone cuckoo she's mad but this little damsel insisted that she was telling the truth and as she continued to insist they now said okay maybe she's not mad she saw his ghost she saw an angel can you imagine that saints praying without season for the deliverance of peter now hear that peter is at the door and they say that no it can't be peter it's his ghost uh, you must be mad uh, before you judge them sometimes we are just like that we are praying but somewhere in our mind somewhere in our hearts we don't really feel that it's gonna happen we are just fulfilling the righteousness we're just going about the motions they were praying but they didn't expect that it would actually happen but Peter kept on knocking on the door and when they heard the banging on the door finally they came to the door and they saw Peter I came to tell somebody today that what you have been praying for is at the door it's at the door tell your neighbor tell that person that's with you in your living room uh, that's with you in your bedroom or your kitchen or wherever you are it's at the door ah it's at the door it's toughest when it's closest the darkest hour is just before dawn it might not come the way you expected it but it has come it is coming we've been praying for revival for so long guess what it just came just not the way that we expected it revival I prophesy I decree I declare I announce I proclaim revival all, all over this land in every church amongst believers our minds are renewed to back to the real essence of the gospel Rhoda isn't mad the miracle is at the door we might be locked down but we are not locked up there are still infinite possibilities in God get ready for much more get ready for much more you are surrounded but not by what you think you are surrounded by you are surrounded by God that's why I love that song that was written and sung by Michael W Smith that took the body of Christ by storm it's so prophetic so simple yet so prophetic so even as we step into the place of prayer right now I want us to listen to that song and sing along where we can and just bless the Lord that we are surrounded in the name of Jesus yeah. oh yes this is how I fight my battles this is how I fight my battles Woo! with faith and with confidence this is how I fight my battles not alone for my life is hid in Christ in God I am surrounded but I am surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I am surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, worship, worship along, worship along, worship along. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. Knowing that God is our shield and our buckler. He's the one surrounding us. Not our foes, not this disease, not these problems. But our God is the one that's surrounding us. Woo! Yeah! It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. Come on, sing, sing it at home, sing it at home, sing it where you are. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Woo! This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Woo! Yeah. My battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. 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 This is how I fight. Come on, sing it where you are. Worship the Lord. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Cast your cares unto the Lord, for he cares for you. Cast your cares unto the Lord, for he cares for you. He's the shield about you. He's your glory and the lifter of the, your head. Do not entertain fear. Trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. He will see you through, through this season. He will protect, preserve, and provide for you in this season. He is our shield. He is the lifter up of, of our head. I want to pray for some people right now in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for some people right now that are out there. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. He's paid the price for your salvation. He's paid for your, the price for your salvation. He's paid for your, the price for your deliverance. He's paid, paid the price for your new life in him. But you have to accept that awesome gift that he has made available. Wherever you are right now online, I want you to accept the gift of Christ Jesus. I want you to accept the price that has been paid for you by Christ Jesus. I want to lead you in a prayer where you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have eternal security. This life is temporal. We need to make sure we have eternal security. We insure so many things, crazy things upon the face of the earth. But the most important insurance you need is the insurance of your eternity. And that's only achievable by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you are out there right now, do repeat this prayer of acceptance with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for the price you paid. Thank you for what you have done. I receive your gift, the gift of your sacrifice and your life today. I repent of my sin. I accept you and profess you as my Lord and my savior by faith right now i am born again i'm a new creation in christ jesus i am saved in jesus name we pray 
I pray for you right now and I pray for anybody under the sound of my voice right now in the name of Jesus that has said that prayer with all sincerity of heart that my God will not cast away anyone that comes unto him. He does not cast you away. I give God glory for your salvation today. I decree and declare your life is secured. Now it is hid in Christ in God. You are surrounded by God. You are preserved and protected. Your eternity is secure in the name of Jesus. And I also pray for my brethren, my brethren, my brothers brothers and sisters all over the world in Christ right now. In the name of Jesus, I deliver you from the clutches of the spirit of fear and I set you free in the spirit of power of love and of a sound mind, in the spirit of faith. You are rooted, you are grounded in the love of God which casts out all fear in the name of Jesus saint of God you will be a light in this season you will not spread the darkness you will dispel the darkness by the very light of the glory of God upon your life when men are cast down you shall say there is a lifting up in the mighty name of Jesus thank you Lord and Lord once again we stand in the gap and pray for the nations of the world and pray for peoples everywhere. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. You said that if the days be not shortened, even the elect could be deceived. You said that you will answer us speedily. So Lord, right now we pray for speedy answers. We pray that the days of this pandemic, the days of this pestilence, this scourge will be shortened. Shorten it, O oh God. Shorten it, O oh God. Answer us speedily. Do a speedy work to bring us out of this in the name of Jesus. And may we indeed come out better and not bitter, stronger and not weaker, wiser and not confused in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give you the glory. I give you the praise. I give you the honor. There is absolutely no God like unto you. Take the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. If you are blessed out there, come on, go ahead, put your hands together, express some praise, throw some thumbs up, throw some hearts out there. Let the world know that you are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You are elated. You are happy. You know that God is working all things together for your good. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't tune off. Don't tune off. Stay tuned as we finish this service together. We finish this service together. I need you to stay tuned. Hallelujah. Just a few more announcements. Like I said earlier, we need you to join us in our, in our prayer sessions as much as you can. But particularly, I want you to join in our midweek service life class, which will also be online. Just one hour from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. You don't want to miss it in this new month that we're stepping into, the month of April. I will be teaching a new series and you really don't want to miss it. Faith over fear. You do not want to miss it. This will help you. This will deliver you. This will be relevant to where you are. Also on Wednesday, which is the 1st of April, we're going to speak into the new month of April early in the morning on our conference call from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. So you want to be part of those prayers. You just need to be in every prayer meeting you can be in in this season and let God work a work of revival in your life. I want to encourage you right now as we bring this service to a close that you give. Believers are givers. I am, I am sensitive to the time and the situations that we are living in. I understand the palpable, uh, palpable concerns and cares and worries that are out in the airwaves even today. A lot of us are not even sure about where our next paycheck is going to come from. from. We, I'm sympathetic and empathetic about people that are losing their jobs even in this season or being followed in this season. However, the believer, he lives by giving. In fact, I think that what is happening right now is God trying to challenge us, to get us to realize that our job was never our source. 
We looked at many things as our sources, but God wants you to remind you that he is your source. And you've got to keep get your eyes back onto God as your source and stop looking at man, stop looking at situations and circumstances as your source. Remember that God was the one that led Elijah to the brook Kareth where he was being fed by a raven and he was drinking the water of the brook. But guess what? The brook dried up and God told him to leave the brook to a widow that he had commanded to feed him. I know that God is going to make provision for all of his saints in this season. So this is not the time to walk out of faith. This is a time to keep on walking in faith and trust God to provide for your needs. For us to continue to do what we are doing, to, to continue to serve you, to continue to feed you, to continue to be a light to our world, your sacrificial giving is much needed. So I'm quite sure the moderators are putting up um, the information on the screen now as to how you can give. Our, our bank details are there. Don't postpone it. Do it right now. You are in church. You are right in a church service, only that it's online right now. I'm taking this time deliberately to give you the time. Get your phone, get your device, go to your bank app and give. Every little counts, but I encourage you to give generously, to give generously and give in faith. I believe God is even prodding some hearts right now to give more than they would normally give in this season because they understand the priority of the kingdom and how important it is what we are doing. It is this service that we give, it's essential service. It's essential service, very, very essential service. So I encourage you to give. Um, you can give on our website also. All the details are being shared by the moderators and those that are online. Make sure you utilize that information. This is not the time to withhold. This is the time to believe God and trust God. Amen and amen. If you've been blessed by today's service, if you've gotten something out of this first of our services, from my home to yours, can you give me a thumbs up? Can you throw a heart once again out there? Can you clap? Can you shout in your living room, in your kitchen? Clap your hands. Give the praise to God. Thank God that you are able to be part of this and know that we are moving from glory to glory, from height to height. Just final announcement before we share the grace. Next week, Sunday, we're going to once again be online. But guess what? It's going to be a communion service. We're going to conduct our first online communion service. So you are going to have to find your own emblems at home. You're going to find your own bread. You're going to find your own uh, wine or Ribena or some other um, drink and get together and we will share communion online. And there is no better time than now. To, to go to the Lord's table. So you really don't want to miss it. Next week, Sunday, it's going to be great. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, let's be evangelists in this season. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Let me speak a word of blessing over our offerings and also a final closing benediction over today's service. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. For every giver out there, for every giver that's given sacrificially for every giver that's given even while they're not sure about where their next supply is coming from lord you are our source so i raise my voice up in the place of prayer and i pray for every giver lord provide jehovah jireh arise on their behalf and bring great provision into their lives in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you open unexpected doors. You bring help from unexpected sources. You grant them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the knowledge of witty inventions to know what to do, how to do, when to do, where to do, with whom to do, that will result in their prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bless their seed sown today and multiply it back unto them in great harvest. I pray in the name of Jesus. For that person that is so concerned about the security of their job, show them, oh God, that you've got them. You will take care of them. You will preserve them. You will keep them even in this season and they will testify at the end of the day. Father, thank you. Once again, I pray healing and health upon everyone 
in this season. Let your healing virtue truly flow in our, in our mortal bodies. Quicken life, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Dispelling all sickness, disease, darkness, ailments in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause us to walk with a consciousness that we are surrounded by you. In Jesus' mighty name. Bless your people indeed. Bless your people indeed. Bless their homes. Bless their children. Bless everything that concerns them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.